We're back. <laughs> Jacob, you're back. How you been? <laughs> we are hey. finally together again. Wow, this feels great. You know, we had a good couple runs. I had a great couple episodes, but you had great episodes solo. I loved your uh, your your two at A1. That was, that was fantastic. Oh, thanks. But I was I felt, a little fiery that day. I, 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 felt, slept. I felt like I was missing. I felt like I was missing my you partner. Were. You were. I missed you. <laughs> we're back, though. If you were in person, I'd kiss you. <laughs> you were a little I'm fiery. Just that I'm just, I'm you joking. You were a little fiery. Yeah, I was. I uh, was. I think it was just because I was kind of tired of, yeah. Some of the, some of the comments, I didn't read all the comments in my Q&A, but some of the comments was like, all right. And so I was kind of just losing my patience a little bit. But, yeah, I, but hey, I, mean, I love my I love my followers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, people people love the fiery side of Jake yeah, Weisler. It was fun. They really like that. Man, you have been all over. We'll Dude. do a quick catch up. You oh. just got back from freaking Italy. Yeah, shooting with Will. And um, I'll actually, in next week's episode, I'll tell a really funny story about what actually happened to us. And you're just going to like slap yourself and just be like, how did this happen? How did, <laughs> how <laughs> of all the things that happened, it would be naked Will that this happened to. And yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that on the uh, the next week's episode. It's truly. Well, you guys are both kind of um, uh, accident uh, prone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way of saying it. And so. Yeah, you guys I mean, can be brothers. Yeah, everything it turned out great, you know, but there were some some slip ups along the way. One gigantic oh, sure. one. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to tell you. Did that. you drop something? What'd you drop? No, I didn't drop anything. Which <laughs> we still haven't told the people, Jacob. Uh, All right. <laughs> the recent Relax. drop. <laughs> it's in the. It's. I'm actually going to be posting that this week. <laughs> Are you posting the apology with it? No. Yeah. Well, Maybe I'll, just, I'll have to dig that one up. Oh, actually, yes, I will. Yeah, no, my apology right. to you, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, apologize to them? For, no. I'm not apologizing. To you, yes. Yeah. No, it's been, um, it's been but but the, the real question is here, Jacob, is you're a father, and this oh, is yeah. the first time we have talked about it. You, you, you told people out of your, your Q&A episode, yeah. but you're a dad. Yeah, today is one month since one my daughter was born. Month. She is one month old today. That is crazy. And I've really that. kind of taken a month off. I was telling Nate right before this, you guys, that I was – Turn on my camera. I was like dusting it off. I was like, "Wow, I haven't touched this in like a month." Yeah. <laughs> Until I could remember, make sure I was still cranking my shutter the way I like it, and making sure everything looks good. <laughs> Crank it. So yeah, it's been a month, man. It's been a crazy month. Yeah. I'm definitely sleeping more than Kenzie is, but still not yeah. sleeping great. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Also, I I do want to hit this platform. Um, a few months ago, I remember when uh, we were ha- talking about kids and how like I I made the comment like um, dogs dogs are harder right and everyone was like oh yeah you'll see i am here today on this episode to say are you standing uh, by that after one month of having a newborn baby and not sleeping um the dog was harder (laughs) no way no (laughs) dead serious (laughs) having a puppy was harder the first month of the puppy versus the first month of amelia has been night and day but how, how does Kenzie feel? Does Kenzie feel like Walter? The really? Same. And here's the reason. There's been no like breakdowns with the baby because she's your baby, right? Right. She cries at two in the morning. She, you know, blows out her diaper. You just are in love with her. Right. But when your dog does it. You hate it. It's, it's just, an animal. You just hate it. Yeah. You just want to kill it. <laughs> and also like nobody wants to come watch your dog. Everybody wants to come hold your baby. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's, it's, uh. I don't know how you might have a better word for it, but it's it's the you get a lot more out of it than you're putting into it, if that makes sense. So like with the a reward. baby, we put a lot into it. Yeah, but the reward is like she's perfect and she's beautiful and you just want to stare at her all day and never blink. With a dog, you put so much freaking into that dog. Hourly potty breaks, cleaning up pee all over your carpet, trying to figure out like why is he barking? You know what I mean? Like all those things. But you don't really get anything in return. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I won't go too much. I'm sure I'm going to upset a lot of parents. And hey, you know what? T- to those parents, if I may, Nathan. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we all have just different experiences, all right? So before you get all up in arms and say, ah, it's not my experience, it probably isn't. 
<laughs> Everybody yeah. has a different experience. So, but that's my take. All right. <laughs> I guess we move on. <laughs> we move. <laughs> We're, we move on from that. You'll see, Nathan. We'll, You'll yeah, see. I'll see. I'll see. We'll let the uh, you you and Kayla will be natural parents. Yeah. I, it's, and I think you'll concur with me. Yeah. I, I'm stoked for that day to come. Uh, I can't wait yeah, to give it Make no mistake. Sets. It's hard. Yeah. But, like, yeah. it's just so rewarding. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I can't wait. Can't wait to give in my two yeah. sets. It's just one of those things, like you were saying yesterday when we were hanging out. Uh, yeah. Like when you went to Italy before everyone else, it's just like, bro, yeah. Italy is this and this. Like you talk about yeah. all these like crazy things, you hype it up, and then it's like once you experience Italy, it's like, all right, let's get honest about it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's be this honest. Is, this is this is the good, this is the bad. <laughs> but at the end of the day, yeah. it's still like, it's dope. It's great. And I feel like, yeah. you know, when we have a kid, it's just going to be like, yeah. yeah. I mean, already you and Dal have been able to like communicate and talk about and show. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, but yeah. yeah so I need you to have a son so we can marry our houses. <laughs> yeah, the great houses, the great houses will be married. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Arranged yeah. marriage one hundred and one. House on the T N name, Emilia. Yeah, Emilia T. Hey, How does that sounds kind of nice. <laughs> it sounds kind of nice. <laughs> you better raise a good good son though. Hey, you know I'll try. I'll, I'll try. I'll, yeah, right. I'll try. Anyway, so while away. you were while you were gone, yeah. TikTok blew up with which, some major drama. This was a major T, which yeah, you didn't even find didn't it out until know. I told you. I have not been on TikTok for like two and a half weeks. And for me, weeks. it's been like my whole world. Like yeah. everyone on Instagram, you know, even people who aren't involved want to give their two cents like we're about to. Right. <laughs> like it's just been everywhere. Yeah. Um. So and that's what I thought we could talk about in today's episode. Just, just briefly. Just, yes. you know, one, to be relevant. Right. <laughs> and two, I think it it, it does garnish. Garnish? Garnish and a, a interesting discussion. Yeah. Did I use garnish? Yeah, it was correctly, correctly used. Okay. Um, so quick summary for our viewers who haven't maybe kept up with the Sepia Bride drama. Um, it's been it's been called Sepia Gate, the Sepia Bride drama, whatever you want to call it. It came because, and this is kind of rude, but the photographer's style that this is about is her style is very warm, kind of that honey amber editing, kind of that warm and moody. Uh, yeah. style that's you know popular with a lot of photographers um she booked a bride who was to say the least unhappy with her delivered photos really? and she took her unhappiness to tiktok this bride and called out the photographer and used the language hurtful language along the lines of like mistakes to look for when you're hiring a photographer or my biggest mistake or or photographer nightmare like she's called it everything yeah Basically, Shing, uh, for what she paid, which I think was like four thousand dollars, maybe more. Yeah, I think it was like forty-seven for her photographer. She, the photo she got back, she was not happy with, and it spiraled and it went viral. This video went viral, and it spiraled into this photographer or this bride um, making PowerPoint presentations for the photographer, asking for the raws, showing her differences, you know, saying like you need to re-edit my eyes and do touch-ups, basically asking for touch-ups on every photo. And people, you know, have argued whether or not photographers should just do that naturally or whatever. Anyway, because it blew up, this bride who, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, is a bridezilla, um, and I will proudly say that, <laughs> uh, saw that she went viral, wanted her 50 minutes of fame, and milked this series into like 20 videos. So all, all while the photographer stayed silent, right? <clears throat> stayed in her lane. Um, so I want to talk about that today. I yeah. want to talk about whose side we're on, who, you know, what both parties probably could have, you know, done better. <laughs> um, we just, I just listened to the vendor table, another excellent podcast. Yeah. They just interviewed each party individually, which was did crazy. They, did they interview the bride? I don't know if it was live, but they, they got an exclusive interview and then talked about her, uh, her responses on mm. air. Okay. Yeah, I saw, um, I saw but Nathan, before we dive him. in, what is your yeah, what is your take on this whole Okay Sepia Gate? Sepia Gates. First off, I'm glad we're calling it Sepia. It was driving me up a wall when I was hearing people say Sepia. I'm like, no. Nah. Okay, I was actually gonna ask you that. Nah, I thought you dude. would know. Am nah. I saying it wrong? No, see, I go by Are you sure? I, I'm not sure, but I go off Jack Johnson, right? You know the yeah. song? Some se- Sepia Jack Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. It's he says Sepia Tone Lovey. Some shoebox of photographs of sepia tone love. Or does he say sepia? Se- sepia? I'm looking it up. Some sepia tone. I think he says sepia tone. Or it's just kind of like slurred. But I don't know. I go, oh, no. Oh, no. It what? is sepia. Oh, my gosh. 
Wow, we're idiots. Right. <laughs> According to the American Pronunciation Guide, it all is right. sepia. Well, I guess we're going to call it, I'm still going by sepia, all right? No, I can't. I'll, I'll give in. But, uh, I've said this so many times I've never been corrected. All right, go on. I also don't say that word a lot. Sepia. No, I was going to give it a little mix of both. I but, do uh, when I'm talking about my mother-in-law's childhood. I'm like, I always picture it in sepia. So are we going to say sepia or sepia in this episode? You know what? Screw it. Let's, let's evolve, Nathan. Sepia. <laughs> sepia. What if, are you sure before we say sepia? Are you sure? I, yeah. I just, Did you just Google it? I wish I could. Yeah. Google what about it. like it's, the Google pronunciation? The pronunciation is S-E-E-P-E-E-U-H. Dang. Sepia. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe well, Jack Johnson does say sepia. Sepia tell. Sepia tell the okay. Anyway, uh, I am, I don't have any allegiances. I don't have much bias going into this because I really don't care uh, if it's a photographer or a bride. You know, we like to look at these stories as they occur. I want it known. I am 100% team photographer. Okay. No no debate about it. Zero. Yeah. Team photographer. Um, yeah. The other day when you told me about it, it was kind of like a, a shock. I didn't know this is all going on. So I went down the rabbit hole. And I did a little bit of investigating. It's, it's a pretty boring rabbit hole, actually. <laughs> it is. It is. And every single At least TikTok, from the bride's side. Yeah. yeah. Every single TikTok I saw from the bride, I just kept getting a little more frustrated. Like, how many videos are we going to oh make about this? And it, came, it became pretty clear that it was just about the views. She was just doing it for the it views. It was. Yeah. It, <laughs> oh, it irked me. I think, I, I don't know if you saw my comment on like, I think it was her 10th video. She said, last thing. And then I commented, I'm like, proceeds to post 10, 10 more. more videos. Yeah crazy but i did a little bit of digging jacob and uh here here was my my reasoning she said the sepia bride said she's been sitting on this for seven months which means she got married roughly around the new year around january ish so it's not wrong to assume that she booked this photographer probably a year in advance somewhere around january 2023 sure. so i All went right. back to the photographer's portfolio I found wow. a wedding Detective from Nathan. January 2023. There's a couple named, I think it was Erica and John, Jim, something like that. Erica something. Okay. Erica with a K. We should show the images on screen right here because okay. the tones are 100% what the photographer did for this bride on her wedding. Pretty much the same weather too. So like before we get into this whole like, oh, it was a little bit overcast, but the day before it was more sunny. No, no, no. This one from January of 2023, almost the same weather as this bride. Brown, yellow, sepia, 100%. You can see in the greens, you can see in the white dress. Okay. It's it's just what the bride booked. Yeah. And and before she's like, oh, I didn't go through all the galleries. It doesn't matter. It was there on her Instagram. Like, yeah. plain as day. It's the photographer's yes. style. That's my issue with this whole thing. Yeah. And And... I wanted it to be deeper than it was, I think. I was just watching all these videos. I'm like, surely there's more to it than the bride projecting. She's mad that she paid, she got what she paid for. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, surely there's more to it than that. That she hired a photographer with the style, she received the style back, and and then she like didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And then she asked for the raws and edits her own photos completely differently. No warm tones, nothing. Hey. I'm like, well, I know photographers do like that. You should have hired them. Right. right, right. And I love the CPF photographer style. Right. Because that's fantastic. her creative Great. style. And we have a paragraph in our contracts Even. that's all about artistic release. Right. We, we reserve the full right to edit the way we, we see fit with the music we want, the color we want, everything, right? Yeah. Right. And so I think this bride was just projecting what maybe she changed her mind or or she just like, you know, thought she was saying something she wasn't. I don't know. She just, it was, it, the bride was at fault. Yeah, 100%. Couldn't agree more. I also think it goes to teach a very, very valuable lesson. And that is if you are doing a black tie wedding like this bride did, have a timeless photographer. Don't go. Thank you. Don't go getting a photographer that has like these crazy presets or like crazy Thank looks. You. Just get a timeless looking photographer and videographer. Thank like you. that's it. That's all it is. Yeah. That's on her. Yeah, it is. In my opinion, and this might be, maybe you and I agree on this, but um, I think the sepia style 
which is not even, I would call it more like a honey amber glow. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of like that warm. I'd say that style really does live in adventure. Yeah, elopements. Uh-huh. Yeah. With yeah. The, yeah, I mean, there's always exceptions, but like for the most part, right? Speaking generically here, or generally here, excuse me. But yeah, I agree. I think if it's a black tie, and the bride's dress and her color palette, you want those colors. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It also made me a little upset when she was like, here's the moment as it was captured on iPhone. And then she was yeah. what my photographer gave me. It's like two so ignorant. completely different things. <laughs> like she has I no think, idea how an iPhone yeah. camera works. No. And I think that's what bothered me the most about this whole thing. I like really, it's always the comment section. Really? Just the most ignorant people in the comments who have no idea how this world works. Yeah. Um, giving their two cents. Yeah. Right? And it's like, okay. And someone's like, sweetie, if you're paying more than 200 bucks for a photographer, you're being scammed. I'm yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> like, but like, oh. everyone like likes that comment. I'm like, okay. Dude. Like, there's like 20,000 likes. I'm like, All right. Well, like, why are we giving, uh, you know, what's her name? You know, M- Mathilda, whatever credit when she probably does, shouldn't have an opinion on this subject yeah i've been so fed up with tiktok comments lately they're just a bunch of heathens man they have no idea what's and going on i don't on. know who's behind them bots yeah the bot farms one of the comments um i got in a yeah. argument with one of the people uh, i won the argument because i always try to <laughs> i won. <laughs> but it was uh Declared it was like i paid i paid 500 bucks for my photographer uh you should not have paid four thousand and I replied, and I said, name one product in this world where there's not a low budget and a high budget option. Yeah, no. And uh, they never replied. So, and I got, I think I so outratioed you them likewise. Yeah, you so. outratioed. Yeah, you know yeah. what, you know what this whole situation. Like, name from, a product. Yeah, you, you can't. Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we, we anything. You could buy a Voss or you could buy station. Kirkland. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, uh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, uh, you know, this whole situation reminded me of was, uh, a couple months ago, I don't know if you saw this, but there was like something going viral on TikTok again with a wedding photographer. And she posted something saying like, yeah, I charge $8,000. And she showed like I the did gallery see and it was blurry. Like those kind of like artsy uh-huh. blurry. And it <laughs> went viral. And that right mm-hmm. there was where I was just like, you know what? TikTok commenters, they truly don't understand the wedding industry because all those comments were like, yeah, I know you should be paying more than 500 bucks, a thousand bucks for yeah. a photographer. And yeah. I'm like, wait till you hear that we just shot a wedding and the photographer charged 35 grand. Like, <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah. yeah, you guys just don't know. You just don't know. There's a spectrum to everything. Right. Right. Whether it's pricing, colors. And I think, and to sum it all up again, that was my big issue with this drama is that it was so transparently obvious that it went from being like a rant on TikTok about her photographer Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden became like, this is now about me. Right. And I want as many views as possible. Yeah. And I'm going to milk this and and exaggerate. And I could always tell when she would like, you know, c- creators always like, when they when you know they're lying, they always start like talking like in superficialities. Yeah. They, and just like, you're, they say things like, okay, no. It doesn't really make sense. Yeah. <laughs> but they're trying to like, they're trying to like rush over things to push their narrative. Right. When you're like, okay, but like, honey, <laughs> you... That's the that's the photographer you booked. Like it's you right. paid them. It's your so fault. it's like it's like yeah it's like who's the idiot you know yeah <laughs> dude I so that's, yeah Ugh. while I was going down the rabbit hole I felt bad for two people not the bride not the photographer I felt bad number one for the poor husband because there's a part in her story where she's like <laughs> telling her husband she's getting her husband involved and he's like crying on the phone to the photographer like listen my wife is. So sad. She's terrified. She's she's vulnerable, and he's like breaking down now. And I'm sure he probably saw the photos and was like, "Oh, this is a great gallery." Didn't even notice. Yeah. Didn't know anything. Probably about has no it. idea. But yeah. all of a sudden, he was dragged into it. His wife is out of meltdowns, and now he's like stressed out, trying to. He, I feel bad for him. Number two, yeah, I feel bad for the videographer. Imagine being a videographer and you see this bride just blowing up her vendors for what they did. And you're just, you got the sweats, you got keyboard sweats and yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, these colors perfect. And did uh, you see her, I think about her videographer. Edit. I did see the edit. She loved it. What are your thoughts? 
about the video? Yeah. Or the bride? The video. Uh, creative preferences. That's all <laughs> that's yeah. all this industry is, man. It's yeah. just it's just people. Yeah. I think I think the combo of vo- photo and video she chose is interesting. I I I I, I, I totally truly do that. think, and I love the photographer style. Yeah. I truly think she should have gone with a different photographer. Yeah. If the videographer style was her vibe, which I think I, it was. I, I totally agree with that. I agree that it was a weird combo, but in my it opinion, was. And, and, and the the videographer did a great job. It's just a different style from us. Like they, you could tell they were talented. They knew what they were doing, but different yeah. style. Uh, but yeah, having a sepia tone photographer and then having yeah. a videographer at a black tie event, that's, that's the foundation mm-hmm. we're talking about here, a black tie event. And they're using like a bunch of super eight overlays and like vintage looks and stuff like that. That's where I was like, man, what? What did she have in mind of how yeah. to capture this wedding? I'll tell you, trendy. Right? She wanted everything to be Pinterest trendy. Yeah. Man, I saw this other post. Here, keep talking. I'm going to find this. It's yeah. No, so on I, par with this. Without projecting too much, you know, trying to separate the bride as a person from what she's projecting onto to TikTok. I'm sure she's a, mm-hmm. a you know, decent good person. I don't know. Uh, I would bet that this is one of those those weddings that was thrown with the thought in mind that it's going to be viral. So we're going to do the every single viral moment. We're going to do the groomsmen walking in like they're an NFL team, the pregame, throwing the jacket over, getting yep. every single groomsman. And then we're going to have a surprise dance with the groom. We're going to have a surprise dance with the bride. We're going to have all these like different things throughout the day. And hopefully one of them will go viral. That's that's what I'm going to guess. She wanted that. It's become wedding. so normal. Oh, I don't like. Right, you're gonna you're gonna love this. So yeah. the creator's name is Molly Lou on TikTok. Molly Lou, Molly Lou is her yeah. at just for for credit. But she posted this. Um, also, her her description says, "I'm blocked by Sepia Bride." And one of her followers came on my page to tell me, "Wait, wait, to tell wait. me how bad my sorry is, yeah." Is, let me is the bride Molly? Wait, who's Molly? No, this is just some random photographer. I think she was probably weighing in on the Sepia drama. And gotcha. Because of that. The sepia bride blocked her. Gotcha. Um, which uh, again shows me true intent, right? If right. like you don't want to hear the other side of the story, and then Maybe. you just look at the photographer, the bride, and she only only favorites the ones that she's agree agrees with. <clears throat> right. It's just like, okay, well, you're really just looking for validation, <laughs> and you're really not seeking to hear the other side because you just want views. Anyway, so this Molly Lou said, "I'm blocked by sepia bride," and one of her followers came onto my page to tell me how bad my photography is. <laughs> Photography is my God-given gift, and I believe that. And then she posted this. I've been photographing weddings for 12 years, and I'm quitting. Weddings have changed. No matter how candid of photos people want, people now throw weddings with their photos in mind as the final product. Think about that for a second. Boom. What you just said. People now throw weddings with their photos as the final product. The wedding used to be the final product. Disclaimer before reading, if you are thinking, hey, I don't fit into your narrative, please know I'm speaking broadly and also work in a very high-end high end area where those people were not the clients I was serving. Okay, so she mm-hmm. give a little disclaimer. Mm-hmm. In 2013, you wouldn't see full galleries from other people's weddings. All those emotions you know, nothing about the story behind. Only detail shots were shared on Pinterest, etc., and family photos and all else were kept private. Your expectations for what your wedding photos would look like Hinged only on how your wedding would go. Your plans, your decor, knowing what would be captured would be unique to you. And based on what type of photographer you chose, you would have some expectations of a final product, such as number of photos, etc. But all you would have but all you had to compare to was close friends and family weddings. Because you had no idea. Showing up to weddings now, everyone has an idea in their head of what I'm doing, of what my final product would look like. And everything is conducted all day with my final product in mind. Something that used to be my own has been taken from me. You don't understand how different it feels. And brides like Sepia Bride make it impossible for me to do my job because all day they are holding them... I love this part. All day they are holding themselves in the way that they want to be captured instead of just letting themselves be. I can never do my job properly at weddings like this. Magic happens when people let themselves be messy. Man. I love that take. That is a great. We've been at weddings like that, where where they're not being themselves because they're they have involved the photographer too much, right? right? And and these poor photographers, I've seen them just stress about it. 
Yeah. They feel like they're running the day. Like this is their big styled shoot that they have to produce, right? Yeah, they, they have to get, they have like a whole checklist of poses and shots that they have to get from the bride. And it's like, well, why do you want those? Why not let yeah. your photographers create art unique to your wedding and have zero expectations of what the final product will be? Yeah. Man, that was a very well-worded take from that photographer. I know. Was Especially coming from a photographer who's been doing it 12 years. So she can she can compare the TikTok era versus the 2013 era of weddings. I just love it. Yeah. It's such a cool perspective. Yeah. It, it just it brings up again, and we should talk about this on another episode. Uh, just content creators. What is the importance of content creators? Because uh, yeah. something that's kind of getting under my skin right now is that's all that anyone okay. is talking about. It's just like, can we just let it go? Do you see Are a they, few? I've been seeing posts in Facebook groups saying, uh, they lost a job. I feel like content, content creators are running us out of the game. I think I'm going to yeah. quit. I'm like, who, who are you talking to? Yeah, th that's exactly what I'm talking about. I, I feel like I'm only seeing those. Yeah. It's, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that in a different episode. All in all, Sepia, Sepia, however you say it, Bride was in the wrong, in my opinion. I do think so. I I think that the sepia photographer handled it very well in just letting it play out, see what happened. And then yeah, like in her episode with the vendor table pod, like she was very, very kind, like a very good person. Like she right? I did, however, want to ask you, I feel like what we need to talk about this is a is a business model. Are we undercharging for raw footage? Do, do you know how she was four thousand dollars to get the raw photos? Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear that part. No. So the bride wanted the um, raw photos and probably. she's like, yeah, it's going to be 4k. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that is outrageous. But I, after doing, I some, do think that's outrageously high. But after doing some comment digging, there were a lot of photographers like, yeah, yeah, this, this much per photo or whatever. Yeah. It usually comes out to like three, 4k. So that sounds oh, right. interesting. And I'm like, wait, what? 4k for Ross? And then there were a bunch of people I like, think... no, I never in my wildest dreams would get out Ross. I think people I misunderstand Adam about Robert it because I think Adam's it. take is like, I don't care. And he's just like, yeah, whatever a hard drive costs, I'll send it to you. Right. Because I think the difference, and then maybe this is just my take, but I think the difference between a videographer's raw and a photographer, a photo, oh wow, photographer's <laughs> raw um, is audio. Like what the sepia bride, sepia bride proved is that she could throw in a preset and make the photos look completely different. Right. But good luck taking all of our footage and audio and making a film that even resembles the film we gave you. Yeah. Yeah. Because not everyone can be a video editor, but but anyone with Lightroom on their phone can be a, a photo editor. Right. And I say that loosely, I'm not saying. I know there's a lot more that goes into it, but right. photographers come up in arms against me. I'm just saying, you guys know what I'm, you guys know what I'm saying. I'm, so yeah. I don't know. But maybe we are undercharging. Maybe. I don't know. I was like four grand and every We're photographer like, was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wait, you guys... We'll be, we'll be transparent. We charge $1,000 for our raw footage. Should we be charging more? Yeah, are we <laughs> undercharging for raw footage? Adam? We're ref? Cherish? Somebody? <laughs> Let us know. Curious. Anybody? Okay, last last question on this topic, Dan. Yeah. We'll be done. Yeah, yeah. I want to get your take on presets. Photographer presets? Because some, some of the heat that came out of those videos was she felt like they were slapping on a preset. <laughs> um. And that was it. I mean, slap it on, export out. Yeah. Which I think again, that's her. Th my issue with TikTok. She slapped on a preset and 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 left them. It's like, hey, well, you're assuming she left them. You don't know what she actually no did idea. in those photos. But now we're running with that narrative anyway. But just the thought of like photographers using presets and you know that's another and not thing. individually touching up every single photo. That's another thing with this whole CB a bride photographer scenario. This photographer, I don't know when she had them published, but she has published presets. And guess what they are? Sepia. Yeah. The bread should know, you know. Uh, I'm going to go buy the pack right now. Just yeah. My fellow creator. I bet this photographer <laughs> has like gone up in inquiries tenfold. Dude, right? There's no such thing as bad press, right? Yeah, no such thing as bad press. Uh, my opinion on presets, I think it's fine if you use presets. I mean, it's it's pretty much the equivalent of us using our LUTs. But that right. doesn't mean you shouldn't go through shot by shot and just say, oh, that one is a little bit off from those other ones. Like I'm going to adjust the eyelid shadows. Like I, I still think like that's a 80% of the way there or 90%. Then you go through and just kind of tweak. Uh, but yeah, it's not a sin to use presets. It's like using a LUT. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, just, but yeah, if you just slap it on and then deliver it, then that is lazy. Go through it at least before delivering and make sure each shot is consistent, which... 
It was. And I do think that our generation of photographers don't do per photo touch-ups that me. intensely the way maybe yeah. we used to back in the day. Right. I could be wrong, but in my circle of friends who are photographers, I feel like it's just like, unless you get like, you know, I don't yeah. know, it's just like a different expectation walking into a wedding. If like, are you going to touch up every single photo? Yeah. Like I know Courtney is one who like will like remove like the smallest things out of a photo because mm-hmm. it bothers her, yeah. but not everybody's like that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess know. it's just like a fear of this is the generation of Visco photographers, right? And Visco is just uh, famous for you take a picture, you throw on a little preset and you're good. Yeah. And so there are a lot of photographers who have become photographers because they loved Visco. And so now they right. just do it with the camera, put on a preset, and that's it. Yeah. They don't have any knowledge of how to, you know, adjust things in raw photos and things like that. And they just mm-hmm. rely solely on it. In that case, learn the basics, you know, yeah. it's really not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I love seeing, I saw on the other side of TikTok <clears throat> this week, people who have been posting, like, uh, I use the sepia photographer or sepia photographer. Yeah. And they said like, we loved them. And it's like yeah. them on the beach, their family, yeah, just super yeah, adventurous. I'm like, that's the vibe though. That, yeah. that perfect example of like, you know, picking a photographer who be, you know, isn't just trendy or you like the style, but like you actually vibe with. Yeah. And yeah. like matches your personality. And if you're a bride who's walking into a wedding with zero personality and you just want to be a Pinterest bride, shame on you. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm sorry, you're going to have nothing but regrets. And you're gonna just be like, you're. It's just not gonna be original, and it won't feel as magical as if you actually do what you want to do. Yeah. So I, I love seeing the the photographer get some love, and I do think there's such a thing as bad press. I think she just got the people who wanted her style now follow her and want to work with her, mm-hmm. and the ignoramuses who who don't understand this world and don't like her style can just ignore her. You know, yeah. there's no. I'm not gonna cancel her over it. <laughs> I would. I would love to hear the videographer pitch in. Just to see like, if it was the bride. We should <laughs> find him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See if, uh, if the bride truly was just like a monster to deal with. See how many revisions they had to make so for the curious. video. I would be so I would love to hear that. But uh, maybe, try maybe we'll try to reach, a, reach out, get them That'd on the funny. podcast. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's. You that's, guys, let us know in the thoughts. comments. We'll, yeah. Yeah. No, great thoughts. Let us know in the comments, you guys, what your thoughts on the sepia gate are. And sorry for saying sepia my entire life. Um, yeah, everyone Sorry around me says sepia. I still might <laughs> anyway. say sepia. I feel like it makes I sense. Know. I think sepia is weird. I think I'm always going to say sepia toned, so you can't really tell if I'm saying sepia or sepia. I'm just going to say sepia toned, you know, like yeah, Jack sounds, Johnson. It sounds like you're saying S I like sepia. Yeah, so like, am I se- what am I saying? Yeah. I'll just say it like Jack. Yeah, anyway, yeah, you guys, we'll be back. We are back on the podcast. Thanks for being patient with us. Life's been crazy. Summers are always crazy. It's been a fun. We'll be back next week with more juicy content, more fieriness, maybe a, an episode of Jake un, Unhinged, Jake Unfiltered, <laughs> <laughs> Jake Canceled, maybe, we can call it. <laughs> we should call it the uh, GWFU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how, that's got a ring to it. The GWFU. I like it. All right, you guys, drop a like, drop a subscription, whatever, comment. We love you. See you next week.